Welcome to this Tobacco University video where I'm going to go over a rotary and drop walk behind fertilizer spreader comparison to determine which one of the two is the best fit for your given situation. All right, when you're looking at these options, here are some questions you should be asking. Is the ground established or is it rough? Has it been recently tilled and roughed up? Well, that's gonna be best for a rotary spreader. Is it more of a turf grass application or more level? Drop spreader might be the favored pick there. What type of fertilizer are you looking to apply? Is it gonna be pelletized? Uh, that would be best for a rotary spreader because they throw it further. Or a powder, that would be better for a drop spreader. But the questions are just go a little bit beyond this and I want you to make an informed decision. So when we're looking at a true rotary spreader here, it throws fertilizer well beyond the width of the spreader. It can cover a large area very quickly. It's best for products that come in pelletized form because they're able to kind of throw that on um, that distance and allows for that nice even distribution. Now we're looking at a drop spreader. Uh, as the name implies, the product basically drops vertically. There's an agitator that turns when the wheels move to keep an even distribution of the material. It's best for small areas or when applying fine or lightweight products. Overlapping is recommended to ensure even coverage. Uh, so you kind of go one way and you kind of go the other way. It allows to ensure you're getting a consistent coverage over the entire area you intend to get that product applied. Now we're looking at our rotary spreaders. I said they throw the fertilizer. Well, the question is, well, how far? Uh, using a constant sized and weighted pellet as product, you can go over um, some trays and collect the material after a few passes, as we can see here. Uh, this will let you know what the effective swath is for your spreader. So you collect all the trays and gives you an idea. Of course, it's always going to be a little bit more closer to the center point where the spreader goes over. It gives you an idea of that effective swath, how far are you actually covering. And this will determine your overlap area as well. So you know, it takes, can be a little bit of a pain to do initially. Just go over the same area, collect some data, and really makes it much easier for you to make sure you're not wasting um, your time and wasting product when you're going through and applying it. For full calibration of spreaders in general, Penn State Extension has a full set of instructions. So there's um, a link here, direct link. You can read more about that. Uh, what it comes down to is the amount of product you apply over an area. For most homeowners, you can read the su suggestions on your spreader, calculate your observed swath, and then in favor on the low side and make a pass of known amount of fertilizer. So once you know the amount of fertilizer you added and you know the area you covered, then you can check to see how much area was covered per pound of uh, fertilizer and factor this up for your chosen area to ensure you're applying the correct amount. This will help ensure you do not go over applying fertilizer for a given area and help keep your costs low and your chance for environmental c contamination also uh, low. Now, if you're calibrating a drop spreader, since the swath is known, since it depends on the width of your drop spreader, the same concept for determining fertilizer applied to your area as a rotary spreader can be followed. The key again is to favor on the low side as it's easier to make another pass or increase the drop rate and there's ways you can dial in those spreaders. Keep in mind that you should be making two passes to ensure even and complete coverage. Now what's great to kind of take some of the confusion out of this is that um, a lot of times fertilizer bags will have a starting point. They'll look at your spreader model and they'll look at the suggested settings to apply a set amount of fertilizer. So again, this can act as a great kind of way to start um, and then go through, do a little area, and then you can go through and determine whether it's matching what you think. Again, the key part here is also keep a you know consistent walking pace because that will affect your amount of fertilizer um, added as well. And there are some common fertilizer model brands there. And a lot of times fertilizer companies and spreaders try to match up um, what they have there. So you can at least provide a substitute there that may be close to what you have to again, create that good starting point. Now that suggested pattern, I suggest a cross grid pattern, reduces the chance of skipping over an area. So you kind of go from here, we'll say from left to right, and you get to the end, and you kind of go up and down. So you kind of go like an east-west and then a north-south kind of spreading pattern there. And that helps ensure even coverage. Now this is an example of poor applications, uh, particularly with uh, when you're applying nitrogen-based fertilizers, you can see an area that you might miss. And here we can definitely see the overlap was not nearly um, what should have been. And this causes the striping to occur in these particular lawns here. Now, if you can only get one, just speaking in general, uh, rotary spreader is probably the more universal spreader. It can spread powdered forms of fertilizer, but it will be messy and it will clog easily, but it can be done. 
Uh, this is designed, this uh, rotary spreader, typically for larger uh, applications, and this is for a reason, because of the type of material they're applying, the coverage area, and the efficiency overall. Okay, these are some larger ones mounted on the three-point hitches of tractors, but the same could be applied to your walk-behind. Now, if you want kind of a little field comparison, I shot some video here comparing a, um, looking at two Scott brand fertilizer spreaders, both a rotary spreader and a drop spreader. So if you want to see some of the specifics of them, hopefully you enjoy the out in the field video segment. Now what we have here are two spreaders. They each have vastly different purposes. So you don't want to use them for the same thing. I'm gonna okay, this first fertilizer spreader here is called a rotary spreader. And just as the name implies, put the fertilizer or lime potentially in the hopper here. It's gonna go through and work its way down and get spun out at the bottom here and spread that way. It's a rotary motion that goes through and does. And the advantage is the wheels kind of go through and they drive it. And you can see that it rotates as you will go through and walk the field. Great for large pelletized fertilizers, or in this case, lime is being added. Uh, great to be able to dial it in and kind of get an even spread throughout your field. This fertilizer spreader is called a drop spreader. And just as the name implies, you put the fertilizer here and it drops through. As you go through and push it, it'll rotate those, causing it to basically drop. It won't really spread or throw a lot. And that's why you see established here, there's some arrows uh, to try to indicate where you should be aligning to as you go through and drop spread it. Because this won't offer you the kind of the advantage to kind of go through and create for a small area of different types of fertilizers, maybe more powdered based, can drop through here and will only go in between those two wheels. In comparison to the other fertilizer, these uh, rotary spreader, that'll actually throw the fertilizer. As we kind of see in the image here, it is that we'll kind of throw it and get a little bit larger of a spread area compared to just in between the wheels. So again, while these are two spreaders, they each have a different purpose and should be used for that purpose. With the rotary spreader here, you have a handle that you would grab and when you pull on that handle, it will open up uh, that and allow that fertilizer to fall through the little hole here. As you go through and walk, it will rotate that right through and how you control how much that opens is based on the dial or the spreader setting here. Uh, so I'll determine whether it opens only this much when you pull it, this much. That'll essentially determine how much fertilizer you add uh, as you walk down the field. The drop spreader works in a very similar way where you have the same thing here that you would pull and that would open the area there and as you walk and will rotate those. However, what's unique here is that you also have a setting as well that you can go through and adjust. So on the drop spreader, you have a setting here. You simply dial that in here, it's set it to five, and that will change the amount that the drop opens, indicating how much fertilizer you add as you go through and walk down the field. Overall, between the two spreaders that you see here, the rotary spreader is a little bit more universal. It allows for spreading of in general, over a larger area, a little bit easier to spread material. The drop spreader, a little bit more specific and typically used more in a turf grass or lawn setting. Uh, so if you're only gonna buy one, the rotary spreader is probably the one you should look at. But as I said, they each have their own purpose and make sure you get the piece of equipment that matches the purpose for, uh, for your intended job.